I didn't think it's been a very great change. Of course, there's one big exception, and that was, uh, I think, a bit of a surprise to everybody who wasn't involved in the deal, um, and that was the Abu Dhabi Investment Authority's purchase of, uh, of a 110 million um, uh, euro investment in, in Ghent. Uh, that was definitely a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in general terms, I think that you have a lot of these uh, funds who have um, uh, targeted um, European markets uh, without being totally um, clear as to, to which ones they want to go into. Normally, of course, Germany is top of the list. Paris was. I think Paris has perhaps come down a bit uh, since the politics have gone rather awry in that country. Um, <clears throat> And it is a question of getting people's levels of interest um, sufficiently high for uh, markets such as Brussels, which um, most people have heard of, um, but perhaps haven't examined in, in a lot of detail. Uh, and indeed, for the people who are looking for the distress, then uh, I don't think it's a market in which they find, uh, well, I know for a fact that there are not many who are succeeding, plenty looking. Uh, across all markets in Europe, but uh, it's not in Brussels that they're finding the substantial uh, distress uh, situations. So you're seeing less of the sort of opportunistic investors, more of the longer term, <coughs> I mean, like the Sovereign Wealth Fund there coming in, that, that sort of capital? Yes, I think that, um, uh, that there is no uh, particular sign that um, we're going to have a profusion of uh, opportunistic funds active in, uh, in Brussels and Belgium. Um, of course, there'll be exceptions. Um, but uh, by and large, uh, it's back to the stability issue. It's, it's, not, um, it's not had the fluctuations that uh, have thrown up these sort of opportunities in, in places like the UK and um, you know, maybe, maybe the Netherlands. Um, obviously, the one big deal that was done last year um, <clears throat> is indicating uh, a, a divergence there.